Deputy. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, so I was listening to the, the contributions uh, on, the, on the way. Um, I have just have a few questions. First of all, in relation to, I might start with Dr. Niall Muldoon and his colleagues. Um, like, for me, we have to have regulation um, because obviously I think things are going to happen whether you have regulation or not. People can be have a certain view and be against something, but unless it's going to happen regardless of, of what anybody, whatever decisions are made by, by any person who's in government. Um, so I just want to get your views on that. And also in particular, those children that are in a very urgent situation in terms of potentially medical situations with their parent, um, you know, maybe very serious medical issues, and at, at the moment they're not, their family status might not be recognised. What would you recommend in relation to, is there some sort of an urgent course of action that could be taken um, for those children? Um, and then I'd just like to ask Quiva as well in relation to uh, just child psychology in general. Like I'm very much of the view that there's all sorts of different types of families nowadays in the modern era, um, which I welcome. Um, there's people who parent alone, there's people who have two parents, three parents, four parents, one parent, there's a whole bunch of situations and it doesn't matter to me anyway whether it's one person parenting alone or whether you have, you know, ten parents and whether they're male or female. But wouldn't, I just want to get your view in general that in relation to children and child psychology, there's a range of issues that all children face and it's not necessarily uh, any connection or any link to surrogacy. You could yeah. have uh, what some people would deem a traditional uh, family of mother, father, yeah. male, female, everything on the outside looks great, 2.5 children. And those children, for whatever reason, may be, um, you know, seeing child psychologists regularly. And that's, I'm not saying that's criticism. I think I'm a big believer in counselling and I actually believe that play therapy in general should be available in all schools and sh all children should have uh, some, some type of play therapy because I think it's very, very good for them. But I'm just I'm trying to get to the point that I think it's really important that we're not somehow singling out children who've been born through surrogacy as having mm. issues that other children not born through surrogacy don't have. And I just I think it's really important that that message goes out very loud and clear in the committee today, so I'd like to get your views on that. Um, so maybe firstly, um, Dr Muldoon, around the regulation, and particularly there was urgent cases, because I'm even conscious that this committee, I think, let's say we have three months in our report, and then by the time all that gets into legislation, you know, there is some really difficult situations out there. So just interested to get your views. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Deputy. We'll go to Dr Muldoon first. We have four minutes for replies, and if we stick to time, it means we'll get another round of questions in. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the, I think the, it's crucial that we are regulating and we have to move forward with this. And again, the, the concept of having the bill going forward without um, access to or <coughs> without regulating for international surrogacy and, and retrospective parental rights <coughs> is, it's, it just can't be fathomed. You know, yeah. we need to prepare. We have children here who are currently in that limbo land, in that situation in which their parents haven't got full legal right to, to provide for consent in various different issues, whether it's education or medical or whatever. So we need to prepare the legislation for that as quickly as possible. And I suppose that's why the preparations are, that are being talked about are the pre-surrogacy pre arrangements. So that as much you look, you look at the, the process as starting as early as possible yeah. so that we know who's in charge, who's, who's going to take what responsibilities at what stage. You allow for um, a post-birth scenario as well, in case anybody changes their mind, there has to be some sort of a framework that allows for that, um, those disputes to be settled. And the decisions are made as quickly as possible, again, for the, for the benefit of the child. The best interest of the child suggests that they should at no stage be left without somebody who has full parental rights, who is willing to accept them. Okay. Um, you know, yeah. and that's crucial so that they can be looked after in the best way possible. And that's the legislation that you as, as legislators need to bring forward here so that we can yeah. protect all of those children, regardless of where they're born and what the background is. When they come back to Ireland, they have the rights of the, of, of, uh, that they deserve, that every other child has, because that has been set, in, set out in a regulation uh, in, a, in a manner that's appropriate. And the best interest of the child is served that way. And again, for the, the children in their current circumstances, we need to know that we're going to be looking at the retrospective scenario so that those children, the, the legal limbo is taken away and there's a clarity to what, what, who has rights there. Dr. Neonal? 
Yeah, uh, thank you, Deputy Function. Yeah, and, and just briefly, just to say that, yeah, I think it's important to put on record that the rate of psychological adjustment is actually better in families um, where there has been assisted methods of reproduction. Hmm. Uh, so I, I, I think any pathologizing of these children is something that belongs way back. It belongs sort of in the 19, early 1980s, really. And so psychology has moved way beyond any um, pathologizing of children who are born in different family formations. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Thank you very much. Uh, um, it's been really interesting, actually, to, to, to this morning session. I just wonder, uh, it might be an unfair question for, for Dr Muldoon, but um, just the, obviously we've discussed regulation and that is best practice and I think that's what everybody wants to see and that's starting from, you know, as early as possible. So in that context, do you think that a pre-birth um, parentage model or something similar that's in Professor O'Mahony's report, and it might be unfair to ask you to comment on, on his report, but I think his work in 2020 is, is invaluable and actually really holds a lot of the, of the key things that we need to be doing. So I'm just wondering if you wanted to make any comments on that. And if you don't want to answer, you know, that's fine as well. But because I'm kind of pre-birth versus post-birth, I think myself, the pre-birth um, parentage model is, is in my opinion, the way to go. I think it, it really marks out that surrogacy is it's just another way to parent and it's, it's very, very different than other forms like adoption. And sometimes we get um, people somehow comparing them or linking them. I think they're very, very two different processes and I think we need to make that very, very clear. So um, I'm just wondering, and since we have time, and I always ask a pre-birth, post-birth question, so why change the habit now? A few weeks in. <laughs> I'm happy to take that question. Thank you. Um, yeah, so when we were looking at what model that we thought would be appropriate in the best interest of the child, we considered um, the report of the Special Rapporteur on Child Protection. Um, we also considered um, the children's rights standards that are set out, particularly in the Rona principles and what they um, are seeking to guide states in, in doing and implementing those child rights principles. So. Um, we, in our observations, as you have seen, um, have proposed that, similar to the Rapporteur's report, that a pre-birth model of transferring parentage be established in domestic legislation, <coughs> um, so that the 2022 will be amended to, to bring this into account. Um, and we were particularly guided by what the Rona principles state in um, terms of if there have been adequate pre-surrogacy arrangements put in place, as is currently provided for in the 2022 bill, so in terms of consent um, of the surrogate mother, of the um, parents, of the um, donor, if there has been um, independent um, um, legal advice given, etc. Um, and if the surrogate mother is permitted to confirm her consent after a period of time after the birth, that there is no impediment, therefore, in, in, from a children's rights perspective, to having a pre-birth um, uh, transfer of parentage in place. Um, this, so this is why we recommended it. We also think that, as um, the Special Rapporteur has outlined in his report, this would um, involve an application for, parenti for parentage um, to, the, um, to the courts. Um, alongside author pre-authorisation of the um, surrogacy on the basis of a set of pre-surrogacy arrangements. Um, and what this would allow for is an assessment of the best interests of the child to be yeah, taken okay. into account by yeah. the court before the surrogacy is even proceeded with. Um, so in, in doing that, it would allow judicial oversight all the way through the process and not just post-birth, um, and would also ensure clarity for, for that child from yeah. day one. And that's Thank you. Yeah. Just to add to that again, <coughs> excuse me, you're starting to gather that identity information as well very early, but yeah, that, that we're going to hopefully <laughs> offer to the child in the future. And again, the process starts earlier, people get more chance to adjust, mm -hmm. and there's opportunities still at post-birth to adjust again. I think you're looking at the best possible way of making a framework work from that point of view. Thanks. Thank you very much, Chair. Ms. Neonal, have you anything to add to that? It's not something I have thought thought about, so I'd just be answering off the cuff if I answered. Um, yeah. 
the pre-birth model or the post-birth model. Um, I suppose I'm, I'm thinking the, the pre-birth model might have um, the delays before the intending parents um, um, go wherever they're going um, for their baby. Uh, but at the moment, I, I see the dilemma. So I have seen children in the practice um, where the, there have been three and four year delays um, around um, parental orders. So, yeah, I haven't actually thought clearly about it. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, and thanks. I, I'm delighted that you were able to come back, Professor. Um, the very first meeting that we had, I felt when we, when you came in in the afternoon session, um, it was great because the, the first session, I would say, was um, I felt there wasn't a, a sense of urgency from some of the departments, and there was a sense of this is so impossible. How can we ever do it? And as has been detailed in your paper now since 2020, there's there's a range of solutions, and that's actually what struck me about this all these committee hearings over the last number of weeks, while it is complex. In fact, there is a, a bunch of solutions there staring us in the face. So really, the only question I have, um, because I'm glad that you got the opportunity to come in and get on record your response to the issue paper, and you also gave us a very detailed brief as well. Um, but in your opening statement, you, you say it's my considered view that these concerns are based on an incomplete understanding of the recommendations and the associated legal landscape and are beset by logical inconsistencies. So I think the last day you were in, it had emerged that since you had done your own paper, there hadn't been any further follow up or contact from government or from any of the departments. And I'm wondering now that this committee is sitting and we've had a, re a number of sittings, has there been anybody or any follow up from government? in relation to your 2020 paper. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Function. Uh, the, the simple answer is no. Uh, and uh, it is. it has been my approach uh, in my three years as Special Rapporteur to very much uh, maintain a kind of open door policy in my dealings with government departments. I've always been, been very happy to uh, to discuss any of the issues arising, uh, be, they, be it specific recommendations made in my reports or, or more general issues arising in, in, in everyday law and policy uh, work. Um, so I, I've always been happy to, to have those conversations. I have had uh, conversations at various points with, with officials from, from the Department of Children in particular uh, about ongoing work in, in, in their remit. Um, and you know that I think that's a very helpful and productive way to do things, especially on something as technical and complex as, as surrogacy. Um, so that you ensure that you're not kind of speaking past each other. Um, so I, I do think it, it would have been good and, and still would be good if there was an opportunity uh, to, to sit down and have some of those conversations to, to try and work out some of those points of detail. Um, but, but to date, it hasn't happened. Yeah, I have to say I'm really disappointed to hear that because I thought even the fact that when it came up at our last meeting, or the last time, sorry, that you would have been in, that they hadn't um, been in contact, that they actually would have realised, well, they should be in contact and, and have gotten in contact in the interim. But um, I will just say that, like, certainly I can't speak for anyone else, but I know I'm, I'm delighted to get your response back, to have the, you in today to put it on the record. And I really think that a lot of the, the work that you've done in 2020 is is the framework for us. And it it, it, uh, it makes our work, in my view, very easy, um, even though I know it's difficult and I'm not trying to dismiss the, the difficulties or, or any issues around it potentially, but I think it's, you know, we have a really good framework and I hope that that's what we'll be kind of using going forward um, in our report. I'll certainly be advocating for that anyway. And just to thank you for all your work again. Thanks, Chair.